anointing. Father, we thank you and we bless your name for today. Thank you for what you have about to do in our midst today. Thank you for what you have prepared for us before the foundations of the world. We accept that you are God and you are the ultimate. When you speak, no one else can speak. When you open the door, no one can shut. When you shut, no one can open. You are the final God that can speak and cause things to happen according to his own will. So, Lord, we submit to your authority this morning. And we pray that your word will bring to us what you have desired for us to have today. That as your word comes forth, it shall meet us at our point of need. May your word bring transformation. That before we live here, we will not be the same. We thank you, Father, for today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. The Bible says that, and it shall come to pass in that day. Hallelujah. There is a day coming, and that day is here. The Bible says it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck. And the reason why the yoke shall be destroyed is because of the anointing. Now, the anointing of God is something that is unique and that is powerful. The anointing of God can make you into another man. The Bible said that when Saul was anointed by Samuel to be king over Israel, he said to him, that now that the oil has touched your head and you are anointed, when you get away from here, when you get to Rachel's sepulchre, you will find some people prophesying. And when it comes, when you get to that place, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will also begin to prophesy. And you will be turned into another man. Hallelujah. Amen. The anointing of God is something that can change you and make you a different person. The anointing is a divine enablement. It is something that comes into your life to give you the unction to be able to function in your calling and in your purpose in life. Because the things that God is going to do with you, there are supernatural aspects of our our existence and of our calling. And so there are some things that if you don't get the enablement of God's spirit, you will not be able to accomplish them. So God has provided his anointing into our lives so that by reason of the anointing, we will have the enablement to do the things that we would otherwise not be able to do. So the anointing of God takes you from the level of humanity into the level of divinity so that you can go from the ordinary to the extraordinary, from the normal to the extraordinary. And that is what the anointing of God does. Now, there are different levels of anointing and different things that we people have said about the anointing. But the illustration we have here is about a yoke. Now in the early days, God was using this analogy to teach them something. Because these were people who were farmers. These were people who were agriculturists. So they understand the language that God was going to use. And God is is, is such a beautiful God. God talks in pictures all the time. God always talks in pictures. Because he wants you to see something that you can relate to. And he can use that picture to teach you. That's why Jesus was always talking about parables. And if you see what God talks about with people, there's always something that has to do with an image or a picture. So if you know a farmer who uses oxen, at the time, what they do is they put a yoke on the neck of one oxen and yoke it to another one. Because you need two in order to do the work, to plow and to do those things that have to be done on the land. And that is why the Bible said in Corinthians that be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. It is the same picture of using a yoke to put two things together. Because when you put the two oxen together, they have to work together. They have to do everything together. One cannot want to go to the right and the other want to go to the left. It just doesn't work. The yoke is a constraint that is put on them. And so by reason of the yoke, they are linked to something and they have to then carry the burden and plow the land and they cannot get themselves out of it. And God is saying that 
the anointing that comes upon you is going to release you from the burden. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If there's a burden on your life, if there's something you are engaging that God didn't give you, let that burden go by reason of the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Anything that God didn't give you to do, don't labor in it. Any labor that you labor which has nothing to do with your purpose and God didn't give you that labor, it is a burden. Hallelujah. And sometimes the reason why we get into burdens in our lives is because we fail to discover what our purpose is. Now, sometimes people talk about success. And there are so many different definitions of success. Success means different things to different people. Depending on who you talk to, they'll tell you what success is. Hallelujah. And you see, success itself will not have one meaning. Success has different meanings. And I accept that. What will be success to me will not be success to you. Now, the reason why we all have different definitions of success is because we are all called into different things and we are called to do different things in life. Our calling and our purpose is different. And sometimes we allow the world to define the yardstick for success for us. And so in the church, we sit and we begin to measure our lives and our success according to the standards of the world. But the world cannot determine whether we are successful or not. In the world out there, it is a jungle. It is a dog-eat-dog. It is a survival of the fittest. As far as the world is concerned, the end justifies the means. If you can kill 12 people in order to be where you want to be, it doesn't matter. As long as you arrive where you want to be, that is success. And for some people, if you have wealth and you have riches and money, then you are successful. But you and I know that wealth and riches in themselves don't necessarily make somebody successful. Hallelujah. Amen. We have seen many people on the catwalk. We have seen many people on the red carpet. They have money, they have mansions, they have limousines. They can buy anything they want at any time. But they are the most miserable people you find on the face of the earth. They are not successful in that sense. They may have made it to the top of whatever they do. They may be among the best in what they do. But they are miserable people. And you cannot tell me that they are successful just because they have money. So wealth and riches in themselves do not necessarily make you a successful person. Hallelujah. Otherwise, people like Mike Tyson will be successful. I don't want to be like him. Hallelujah. Pete Do Doherty is successful because he's well known. Hallelujah. Simply because you're well known, you've got riches, is not a, an indication of success. You can have wealth and riches without being successful. But when you are successful, you will have wealth and riches. So the two are not necessarily the same. Because Jesus said, a man's life doesn't consist in abundance of the things he has. Another way of saying it is that the quality of your life doesn't depend on the things that surround you. So don't judge your life and your success by the things that surround you. Hallelujah. Amen. So for some people, success is if you can set yourself a target and you hit the target, then you're successful. But whatever success means in life, our success will be because of the anointing of God upon our lives and our relationship with God. Joshua 1 says, this word, this book of the law, shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. And you observe to do everything that is written in it. When you do that, then you will have good success. You will make your way prosperous and you have good success. Our success as a church and as a people of God is because of our relationship with God. It's not because of your cleverness. It's not because you are wise. It's not because of the school you attended. It's not because of the university that you went to. You will be successful as a child of God because you are plugged in to God. And God will give you the enablement to be able to get to where he wants you to get. So whatever success means, beloved, the only place that we can define your success, the only true context the only true yardstick for measuring your success 
is your purpose in life. You can be successful at every other thing. As long as it is not linked with your purpose and your destiny in life, you are not successful. So the things that you are going to be successful at are the things that are linked with your purpose and your destiny. And so with all your discovering in life, the most important thing you need to discover is what am I here for? Why did God package me and send me to this place? Because that's the most important thing in your life. Why are you here? Because you are not your own idea. You are God's idea. So what is God's original idea and intention for bringing me into this world? And of all the people he brought into the world, he decided to save me as well. So what is all this about? So the most important prayer in your life is not for money. The most important prayer in your life is not for a jacuzzi. It's not even a marriage partner, a life partner. It's not the most important thing in your life. It's not even for long life. What is long life if you don't know what to do with it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At 33 years, Jesus was finished. And he had completed everything God wanted him to do. Praise the Lord. He didn't need to spend one extra day after that. Because it will be a waste. So it's not long life that makes you successful. It is in discovering why it is you're here. And once you latch onto your purpose in life, that is when the anointing of God kicks in to begin to empower you and to enable you and to begin to break you free from the yokes and the burdens of life in order to get to the destination that God has prepared for you. And that is the reason why we take all kinds of burdens on our lives because we are just trying things here and there. And it doesn't matter how successful you get at some things. If it is not linked with your purpose, you will never be fulfilled. The thing seems to be working, but something tells you inside that this is not a real deal. Hallelujah. Your purpose is where we will define your success. Because only God can determine whether you are successful or not. He will say to you, come, thou good and faithful servant. Come and enjoy the inheritance that has been prepared for you. Only God can say that to you. Because he is the one who will decide whether you are successful or not. It doesn't matter whether you get a praise of men. It doesn't matter whether people give you applause and say you are great. At the end of the day, is God going to say to you, come thou good and faithful servant? And when God is going to say that to you, it is because you have done exactly what he said you should do. Praise the Lord. Am I preaching to somebody? Yes. Hallelujah. That is where your success is going to be. So if you're going to be successful, the first thing is to find, discover what did God want me to do because that is where it starts from. If you haven't discovered that, then you are just in the dark. And you take on yourself burdens because you're doing things that God didn't ask you to do. Whatever success is, if you are in the place where God wanted you to be, if you are being and becoming all that God ordained for you to be, and you are doing all that God said you should do, I don't care what anybody says, you can't be any more successful than that. Regardless of what your circumstances say around you, if you are in the place that God wants you to be, and you are being and becoming all that God ordained for your life. And you are doing exactly what God said you should do. You cannot be any more successful than that. Let people pour urine on you and call you names. But you are success. Because God is with you. And God is linked with you according to your purpose. And that's why Romans 8.28 says that all 
things work together for the good of those who love God because we are called according to his purpose. So when you discover that purpose, you are free from what this world has to do. Half of your problems will be solved the day you discover what God called you to do. Half of your problems will be solved. Because suddenly you will get a focus in life. And you can only achieve things when you are focused. If you are jumping like a butterfly from one flower to another, you will not be successful. And the reason you are doing that is because you don't really know what the real deal is. The day you discover that, some friends will drop from your life automatically. Your telephone book will change. There are some people that don't belong. There are some things that will automatically drop because they don't belong in the future that God has prepared for you. You will free yourself from all the competition, from all the jealousy, and the need to impress anybody. Because Obia did Hallelujah. Because you have discovered. And that is why people sometimes have all these problems in life. They're always looking over their shoulder. What did Jesus say? Through Paul, he said in Hebrews, that seeing that we are compassed about the so great a cloud of witnesses, we should do what? Run with patience the race that is set before us. The race has already been set. And it is a look on your shoulder. Look over your shoulder and look at what somebody else is doing. Don't look in anybody's track. Don't look in anybody's lane. He said, looking unto who? Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you discover your lane, that your lane is lane seven, and this is where you are going, you don't care what anybody else is doing anywhere. You focus and concentrate on your race because the race has been set before you. Are you running your own race or are you running somebody else's? And are you looking over your shoulder? Or you are looking unto Jesus? The burdens in our lives and the yokes that we take upon ourselves are because we don't really know what God wants us to do. So anything that comes along is welcome. And so you take on yourself all kinds of things. And the Bible says that in that day, the burden shall be lifted off from your shoulders and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. You can be successful at everything you do. And you see, whatever we do, success is not an event. Sometimes, if you look at somebody's life, look at somebody like John the Baptist, he was beheaded. If you look at that event alone, you may be tempted to think that John the Baptist was not successful because he didn't die the way you would like a successful person to die. But these are just snapshots in people's lives. Now, Moses didn't get to Canaan. Does it mean he was successful or not? Several things happened to several people. But you see, success is not just an event. Success is a package. And how dare you say that I'm not successful because something in my life went wrong? How dare you? You only have a snapshot of a certain event or a certain phase of my life. How dare you? Hallelujah. So because the bailiffs came to your house and took your television and things and go and sell, so you are not successful. How dare you say that? Success and failure are not just events. They are the totality of your life. And you've got to look at somebody's life in its entirety. Because success does not imply perfection. You can be successful in your imperfection. But all the people we read about in the Bible who were successful, none of them is perfect. The only person you read about in the Bible who was perfect is Jesus. Everybody else who is named in the Bible or nameless and who was successful, they were not perfect. Because the Bible is full of God who is a perfect God and his dealings with imperfect people. Praise the Lord. I don't know what I'm going to be able to share with you today.
But I'm so fired up. Hallelujah. Because God has wired you for success. You are programmed to succeed. You are built to succeed. And God is making sure that you have come fully loaded with everything you require to succeed. Because you are not your own idea. You are God's idea. And God's ideas don't fail. So if you are God's idea, however much you, how hard you try to fail, you will not fail. You cannot fail. You are not programmed to fail. Your only problem is trying to discover what it is that God wants you to do and be. Once you find that, your success is predetermined. You see the car they call fully loaded. A fully loaded car, it has everything. It has, it's fully yako. It's fully everything. Everything you need in a car is in there. That's how God made you. He built you fully equipped. And so God will not ask you to do anything that he hasn't already equipped you to do. Otherwise, he will be an unreasonable God. But how many of us know that God is not unreasonable? So anything that God has called you to do, you know something, he told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 verse 5. He said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And before you came out of the birth canal, I already sanctified you and ordained you as a prophet unto the nations. In other words, I knew you before I formed you. I had a name for you. I had a purpose for you. I had a program for you. God saw something that needed your presence. That is why you are here. Hallelujah. There are billions of people on the planet God still packaged you and brought you into the system. You think he wants to fill the space? Or he has nothing for you? He just wants you to walk around and around and around. The God that I know is not like that. Even when he gives you one talent, he wants to see profit. Even one talent, if you go and hide it, you're in trouble. He's a God of increase. He's a God of purpose. So anything he does has to have a return. If God packaged you and parceled you and sent you into this place, he has something in mind. The earlier you discover that, the better your chances of succeeding begin to start. In Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11, he says, For as the rain comes down, you see another picture there. God talks in pictures. Go and study the Bible again. You will see that God talks in pictures. And that's why image is always important. And that's one of the things I've discovered recently, that images are important. The picture you have and the picture you meditate on is the picture that will grow and that will fulfill itself in your life. And that's why God talks about pictures. And our imagination is so strong. You know, when you speak to the psychologists and the, the, the scientists and the people who talk about brain, they said, what percentage of the brain do we use? About 5%. The capacity God put in our brain, most of us use only about 5%. That's about 95% of the brain capacity God gave us. It's no use. My God, my God. There's a lot that we haven't seen and we haven't done. So God expects us to be able to imagine, not only the brain, but he has given us imagination. He wants us to be able to imagine and see pictures. I mean, if you can imagine yourself owning an oil well, you can have one. Whether it's in Iran or Iraq or Saudi Arabia or Kuwait. If you imagine yourself. <laughs> because God said in, in Psalm 2, ask of me. And I will give you the hidden, the nations for your inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. But we are asking for pens and shoes. God said, ask me for the nations. So your imagination is too small. You have to expand your imagination. 
And Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, he said, God is able to do what? Exceeding, abundantly, above all that you can ask or imagine. Can you imagine that? The God says sometimes we make him look too small. We limit him. He said, you imagine anything you want. Imagine. Because he's a creator. If you imagine something that never is, he can create it. So what is your problem? Imagination too is free. Nobody will charge you. You don't pay 20 pounds for every imagination. Imagination is free. If you can have a picture and the picture can grow, the picture will become reality. Hallelujah. Amen. So you say you imagine anything you want. When you finish and you ask me what you imagine, I will do above that. And then you are shocked. He said, oh, not only just above that, but I'll do abundantly above that. Really? He said, even more than that, I'll do exceeding abundantly above whatever you can imagine or ask. So he gave them a picture. He said, the way the rain comes down and the snow comes from heaven and doesn't go back, but it remains on the earth to water it so that the earth will bring forth and to bud and to give food to the eater and seed to the sower. God knows we are different. There are some people who are eaters and some people are sowers. But whatever you are, God has made provision for you. Eaters will have bread and sowers will have seed. And he said, if you look at that picture of how the rain and the snow work, he says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall never return to me void. It will accomplish that which I please and it will prosper in the thing where to I send it. So every word of God would work what God said it should work. Until then, it doesn't go back. Every word that God has spoken which hasn't meet, met the target is still active. Still active. He said, that is how I work. And it's not only God's word he sends. In the same way, if he packaged you and sent you with a purpose to do something, you cannot go back until you have accomplished that purpose. God only didn't send his word. He sent you. And he sent you with an idea, with a purpose in mind. Hallelujah. Amen. As for your success, it's written all over you. You are working success, whether you see it or not. Praise the Lord. If Jeremiah was never going to become a prophet, God would never have sent him. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came out, I already sanctified you and sorted out who you're going to be. And if Jeremiah was not going to be a prophet, God would never have sent him. If you're not going to be what God wanted you to be, he wouldn't have sent you. So the fact that you are here and you're still around is an indication that God purpose for your life will come to pass. It means you will succeed. So success is already written all over you. Hallelujah. Oh my God. God's purposes cannot be frustrated. And that includes his purpose for your life. <laughs> Can you believe that you will succeed? You're already a survivor. You're all adults. He, he will be understand what I say. Praise the Lord. Before you were born, millions of seed your father gave to your mother, they all died. You were the only one, only one survived. Only one. Millions of seed that were released at one time. Everybody fighting and battling to find the egg and fertilize it. You were the only one. Only you. The rest all died. And you think you can't succeed? You're already a, a, a success. Amen. You're already a survivor. Amen. You were fighting before you were born to succeed. And that's why you're here. Otherwise, you won't be here. My God, I feel God in this place. I don't know what you feel. The purpose that God has for you is the reason for your being. You need to discover it. 
You are not a product of chance. But you are fearful and wonderfully made for a divine purpose. And the only life you can live is a life of purpose. If you live any other life apart from what God wants you to live, even if you live for 100 years, you have never lived. Praise the Lord. Purpose is the original pattern that God intended for your life. When he called Moses, he took him to the mountain. He said, he showed him all the pattern for building the tabernacle. The size, the shape, the height, the length, the width, everything. Even the specific materials to use to do it. And when God finished with him, he said, make sure you build according to the pattern that was shown to you. That is the only way we can be successful because that is what God will judge. Purpose is what is written of you in the volume of the books. Jesus said, I come to fulfill what is written of me in the volume of the books. You are wired and built for success, beloved. You are more than a conqueror through him. In Romans 8, 37. And you know who a conqueror is? A conqueror is the one who comes from battle, carrying all the spoils of war. The people he captured, the animals he captured, the slaves and everything. And he comes in a procession through the gates and the streets of the city. And people have lined up on the streets and applauding and hailing him. And say, hail the conqueror. The Bible says, you and I, we are more than conquerors. If Nero was a conqueror, you and I are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No weapon formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. You want to know who he shall be? I'll show you a picture. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He gives forth its fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither. And whatever he doeth shall prosper. If you're a businesswoman, you're selling things, you don't even have anything more to sell. If you collect stones and put it on the table and you sell it, people will buy. That is what it means by whatever you do will prosper. What doesn't work for people will work for you. What if you are planted by the river? Whatever you do will prosper. Hallelujah. When you look at Joseph's life, you think he wasn't successful. He started as a child of promise. As soon as he began to declare his future, he started having problems. But you see, he went through all the twists and turns, but ultimately, he still fulfilled the destiny that God had for him. And sometimes when you look at somebody's life, that is why we're all in different lanes. When you look at somebody else's life, you may think that life is beating him. Because when Joseph started out, life was like beating him everywhere he went. Because he was just thinking lower, 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 lower. From the love of his father, he just started going lower and lower. And it didn't look like anything would happen in his life anymore. Everything was going from bad to worse. How dare you look at my life today and think that because you are living a quiet life and nothing seems to be bothering you and I am just lurching from one trouble to another so you are more successful than me. Hallelujah. When you meet pastors, all the conversation they have, the first question they ask you is, how many people do you have in your church? Hallelujah. Amen. So that is the yardstick for success. So if you have 2,000 people, then you are successful. If you have five, then you are not quite so successful. How dare you measure someone's success? Amen. <laughs> because Joseph was just going lower and lower. His father had to love him enough for his brothers to hate him. And they just didn't have to hate him. They had to hate him enough to want to kill him, to put him into his future. And the beautiful, beautiful thing about God is that it's not just the people who love you that take you to your destination. 
Some, sometimes it's the people who hate you. And that's why you have to thank God for your enemies and for the difficult things you go through. Amen. It wasn't his father who took him to his destiny. It was his brothers who hated him who started him off and opened the next door. They hated him enough to him. They put him in a pit. Because the idea was that they had to get rid of him. If they didn't hate him enough to get rid of him, he would still stay in his father's house and be wearing his coat of many colors and never fulfill his destiny. And they got into Potiphar's house. It wasn't Potiphar who took him to the next level. It was the, the wife who hated him. Took him. So sometimes God uses strange things around you to lead you into your success. Don't complain. If you have discovered your purpose, just stay right there. And let God do what he's doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Moses was born a deliverer. And <coughs> Moses was a strange fellow. Sometimes we think Moses had an easy life because he was brought up in Pharaoh's house. The man in his heart was a Hebrew. But in his mind, in his mentality, and in his training, he was Egyptian. Can you imagine that confusion? So the man was a ball of confusion. And he was too Hebrew to be an Egyptian. And he was too Egyptian to be a Hebrew. And he was torn between two worlds. And he knows that he has a calling. God stirred something up in him that tells him that he's called to deliver these people. But they also look at him as an Egyptian. And the Egyptians also see that, no, this guy, he was taken out of water. He's not even a proper... So he was nowhere. He was in the middle of everybody. And so he lived his life in a ball of confusion. And then he tried to start off his ministry and his destiny in the flesh. The arm of flesh will fail. So he killed one man. Very soon, the story was known and they had to, the Pharaoh was looking to kill him. So come and see speed. He ran away, he went to Midian, and as far as Moses was concerned, he's finished with his destiny. Deliverance, Egypt, Israel, put it in the cupboard, locked it. I've finished, I've given up on my destiny. Forty years old man, trying to start his destiny. Now he's in Midian. His father-in-law had to find sheep for him to look after before he can eat. And in our world today, if you are 40 years old and you have to depend on your father-in-law to give you work to do, to be able to feed his daughter that you have taken, the world will call you a failure. Nobody is, a, is, a, is more of a failure than that. When you are 40 years old, 40 years old, giving you my daughter, you can't even look after her. Now I have to give you sheep to look after, so I give you some change. So I'm feeding you and my daughter. And you say you have a future. You have a future and God's hand is on you. We shall see. So the man had given up on his destiny complete. He had put it in the cupboard. He's locked it. He said, I'm finished. I'm through. I'll live a quiet life. And everybody forgot Moses. Everybody in Israel, in Egypt, everyone had forgotten about him except God. When God places his hand on you and gives you a destiny, he doesn't take his hand away. He will never forget you. It doesn't matter where you go and what you go through. His hand is still on you. The right time, he will pick you up. Everybody forgot Moses except God. At the right time, God took him up. And you can understand why he started making all these excuses. He said, I am a stammerer. I, what about if they, they say, who, who are you? Who sent me? What is your name? And God answered all of his questions. By the time God finished, he said, I'm sorry. I don't think I can go. He was going to turn his back on his destiny. But how many of you know that Moses eventually was the deliverer that God used? He still came into his destiny regardless of what he went through. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, prosperity and blessings are also part of the package of success. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Now, if you read Genesis 13, there's a strange story there, verse 2 to 6. It talks about Abraham and Lot. And he described Abraham as very rich in silver, in gold, in cattle, and was extremely rich. So it's possible to serve God and be rich. I didn't get any amens there. Who said if you serve God, you should be poor? Abraham served God. He was a friend of God. And the Bible says he was rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. The man works great in riches. And Lot also began to be rich by association. God didn't bless Lot because he liked Lot so much. Lot God blessed because he was linked with Abraham. And you can get so blessed, people who are linked with you, it will overflow into their lives. But God's purpose for Abraham was that I need to get Abraham all by himself. I need to separate Lot from Abraham. Hallelujah. Hey, Uncle Koyo. Say, Uncle Koyo. Say, Uncle Koyo. Uncle Koyo. Uncle Koyo. Uncle Koyo. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. That's better. God needed to separate Abraham from Lot. But they were so linked together that God had to do something very strange. Hallelujah. I'm still preaching. Amen. Amen. And you see, these people, it wasn't likely that Lot would fight with his uncle. There was no way they were going to quarrel and separate. And if God didn't do something, Lot would still be tied to Abraham. So what did God do? God blessed the two of them. He blessed and blessed and blessed them until the Bible says they are so much stuff that they couldn't stay together. So they didn't separate because they were quarreling, but they separated because the substance that they had was too much and the place cannot contain them. So try and try to as a sort of separate. You see how God is. I'm looking forward to the time where we'll have so much stuff that we can't stay together. Not that we are quarreling, but the things we've got. We have a helicopter. We can't park it here, so it's too small. We can't stay here. Amen. We need a helipad. Amen. We need to get to a place. So you think you're blessed because you got a jacuzzi and a, and, a, and a Mercedes. You haven't seen anything. In the olden days, God blessed people so much they couldn't stay together. Amen. They were so blessed they couldn't stay together. They were not fighting. They were all right. But Charlie, we've got so much. The place we're occupying can't contain us. So I have to move on. And we'll keep in touch. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's how God can bless you. And you can prosper in your whole life the way God wanted you to. Praise the Lord. The anointing is a divine enablement to do what you would not normally be able to do. And let me end with this. Everywhere you read about being prosperous and successful, it says meditate on the word. Joshua was the same. Meditate on the word and do what the word says. Someone, some, someone also said the same thing. If you avoid the sinners, the ungodly, the scoffers, and you meditate in the law of the Lord day and night, 24 hours a day, whatever you do will prosper. It is the word. Now, what we read in Isaiah 10 verse 27, one of the, the anointing has so many different meanings and different 
translations because there are so many different Hebrew words used for which are translated anointing. But one of them, can somebody take this little preacher away somewhere? Go to the other room. <laughs> Bye, preacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> One of the words translated anointing is fatness. Fatness. Okay. Now, if you look at this illustration there about the yoke shall be destroyed. When you feed the cattle or the oxen and you feed them well and it grows fat, the neck will also grow fat. And as the neck is growing fatter, the yoke will give way because the fatness will break the yoke. The way fatness can break that and destroy it, that is how the anointing will destroy the yokes in your life. And the only thing you need to feed on for fatness is God's word. If you can feed on the word and you can meditate on the word, meditating on the word is speaking the word to yourself. So when you're walking, you're walking like somebody who's crazy because you're talking to yourself. But what you're saying to yourself is the word. And when you feed on the word and feed on the word, you will increase in fatness. And so every shackle and every chain that is on you, the fatness alone will take care of it. And you're free. Praise the Lord. The anointing will destroy the yoke. There's anointing in you. First John 2 27 says that the anointing you have received abides in you. That's why I said you come fully alone, fully loaded, fully equipped, well built with everything you need, including the anointing. There are other levels of anointing that you can receive from outside. But most of the things we are looking for are inside. If only we stop looking outside, we'll find a lot of things inside. The anointing you have received remains in you. Jesus came fully loaded, fully equipped for his ministry. He was born naked, like all of us. But he was fully equipped. And everything he needed to accomplish his purpose was here. He just spent time in God's presence. He continued in prayer and in the word and in doing what God said he should do. He just kept plugged in in his relationship with God. He's drawing strength from God every time. And everything else he needed on the earth was available. When he needed a boat to preach in, Somebody had a boat at the right place at the right time. If he needed money to pay tax, there was a fish that had money in his mouth at the right time. Jesus never went to bed and was worried about how he was going to fulfill his destiny. That is God's business. That is for God to worry about. But God has provided everything that you need. Even when he died, Paul, he had no tomb, but there was one waiting for him. Everything you need to facilitate your destiny, you will have access to it. So you don't need to have everything at one go. When you need whatever you need, God will create the access for you. And the anointing abides in you. But what will cause the anointing to increase and to be effective and to destroy the yokes is God's word. And when you feed on the word, the word comes in contact with the anointing. It will activate the anointing of God and it will cause it to work what God wants it to work in your life. You are built for success. You cannot fail. You are anointed to succeed. You are anointed to prosper. You are anointed to fulfill your destiny. So don't let that potential go buried in the earth. Activate that potential God gives you. Because God believes in you. If God didn't believe in you, you would not be here. He believed you would make it. That's why he sent you. If he saw the end of the matter 
and he saw that you would not make it, he wouldn't have sent you. Because he's the Alpha and the Omega at the same time. Anything God starts, it is an indication that he has already finished it before he started. So if God started you, he already knows that you will finish. And that is why you cannot fail. Generations are depending on your success. The church is depending on your success. The kingdom of God needs your success. Creation is groaning and travailing. Romans 8, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. You cannot fail, however hard you try. So when you leave here today, go and be all that God said you can be. Praise the Lord. Let us rise on our feet and begin to pray. The most important discovery you need to make in your life is why, why me? The whys of life are important. You have to discover your own why. And you are anointed. God doesn't anoint anybody to sit down. The anointing is equipment to do. It is an unction to function. And so you will never know that you are anointed as long as you sit in one place. It is when you discover what God wants you to do and where he wants you to be, that is when the anointing kicks in and you begin to function. That is when you will know that the anointing is upon you. And the word is what brings the anointing and fires the anointing to lead you into success. Begin to pray about your discovery. You need to find your purpose in life. Whatever it takes, whatever it's going to cost you, it is worth paying that price. If you're going to fast and pray, whatever it is it's going to cost you, that amount of effort and energy and price you have to pay to discover your purpose in life is necessary. It's a price worth paying because it will free you from paying other stupid prices that you don't need to pay. I want you to pray about that and pray that God will help you to keep plugged in. Love the presence of God. Love his word. Love prayer because these are the things that will drive you into your success. I want you to pray. We don't have much time. I've put it all together. In the next five minutes, I want you to pray about this thing. Lift up your voice. Pray as if your life depends on this because I think your life depends on this. You spare yourself all the problems of life once you discover who God wants you to be and what God wants you to do. Makayantara labastaha.